So we switched back. I got the Hero 11 based in the cabin again because it's been acting up a little bit. Very good from FSD, kind of even getting over the solid white because this Prius was sort of losing control or something. They were slipping into our lane. Um, FSD's been doing a really good job all day here with the rain, which I've loved. It drives around Florida like it's been born and raised driving in the rain. Kind of a good little dig at anybody who uh, tries to say FSD can only operate in like ideal conditions. No sir, that is not true. And so I am getting the full self-driving degraded weather warning. I have still yet on this build to get a red wheel force to take over. So we'll see if that changes with this. I don't foresee it changing. I don't know if Tesla did something different with me and actually like removed the red wheel takeover or something. Uh, the only way I think it'll happen is if I get forced strikes, which I don't plan to do. I keep a clean record here. But I'm actively keeping my eyes open for whenever it does. I'm submitting all the data back to Tesla that I can, even though we are on, we are on Hardware 3 version 12542. Uh, we'll see with this customer if we've got a reaction, a ride along, whatever. Um, I'll probably do the voiceover if it's a ride along. It's a quick ride to the airport. We're gonna see how accurate it is with the, uh, the Uber to Tesla navigation pin. So yeah, we'll go ahead and speed up to getting the customer and getting on the way. And which airline are we heading to? At Southwest today. Perfect. So what is going on everybody? We're back with another ride along voiceover style video. Uh, this customer, when she got in, she was in her phone and pretty quiet up until toward the end of the ride, which we will um, enjoy the audio of as we start to discuss Elon and uh, Tesla and how she feels about it. So stay tuned for that. Uh, this ride was a fantastic example of how FSD performs in Florida during weather that's not so great. What you will notice coming up here is that it does happen to mess up where we'll change lanes without a turn signal right here. And that wasn't great. And I did report that back. Um, not a huge issue, but still a problem. And, you know, again, as you saw, I hit that camera button to make sure Tesla saw it. But what I was later really impressed by here is that the rain didn't really impede FSD. Not to the degree that I thought it would. So right now it's not bad. You know, you can see the... The wipers are going to start to move and the rain is relatively light and we do have a degraded weather warning on the screen there. That's what that little warning note is. FSD degraded due to bad weather. Um, there I'm pointing out the kind of cool ominous power plant in the background. It's coal. It's not nuclear, even though it looks like it would be. But I was just expecting the whole time here that at some point I was going to have to take over because the rain was getting to be too much. Now in builds prior to this, Hardware 3 12.5.4.2. I had a lot of issues with the red wheel forced disengagement, that takeover, that alarm's really loud, you know, do -do 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 -do, and it shows the red steering wheel or red yoke, and it forces you to take over, or it'll start to slow down and turn off. Like, you have no choice. You have to disengage. I have not, up to the point in this video, gotten any red wheel disengagements since getting the update from 12.5.4.1, where I had a lot of them, especially from high beams, from rain, from just really dark roads. And the time I've had this update, I've been wondering when I'm going to get to that point to where I do see a red wheel takeover, especially when you also factor in low sun conditions, like uh, setting or rising sun. And my data bro, Elias, that's responsible for the FSD tracker, as well as the beautiful dashboard where I present my data, has mentioned that both in his Cybertruck and in his Model 3, he's got red wheel takeovers quite a bit, uh, kind of in line with what we normally did. But even on hardware 4 cars, you're seeing this problem, but not with my car, not with Mew. So it's led me to speculate, and uh, speculation being the key word here, that maybe I've got some kind of higher threshold version of 12.542 that Tesla is experimenting with from my car um, because of the just drastic change from getting a red wheel six ways for Sunday to not getting a red wheel disengagement whatsoever. Now, I don't want to spoil too much, but I did discover where that threshold lies and I was really excited to be able to find that and tell Elias about it. That video will be coming out on Monday, so stay tuned. Um, it does involve weather, but it really took a lot to push the vehicle. See, right here is another point where I'm losing my mind because not only in the rain that's increased, but the spray from the truck in front of us 
It's just so much saturation on that windshield. And all we get is reduced speed. And that's what I'm pointing to for you guys to see there. So there's a 105 kilometer max or 65 mile an hour uh, maximum speed right now due to the weather conditions. And there were a couple of little like do 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 kind of alarms that you guys are all familiar with when it comes to like a degraded warning or like camera might be blocked or blinded or whatever. But still, with all this going on, no red wheel takeover. And this just kind of highlights that everyone who thinks that you need perfect conditions for FSC to work or that it won't be able to drive through conditions like this or it needs perfect weather, it's all that's all false. We can see it clearly here on a hardware three car using version 12. 5.4.2 and I mean that just I would imagine version 13 would be doing that much better with it now I don't know if they really did raise that threshold on my red wheel sensitivity um, it's again just speculation but it seems to kind of be the case like maybe they're just using my use case to gauge a calibration there to figure out where that sweet spot might be for when you should tell a driver to take over when the car can't handle conditions versus when it's being overly sensitive or paranoid now, this was a ride um, down the 528, primarily heading to the Orlando airport from uh, kind of like near Alafaya in uh, Florida here. And we're coming up in a little bit here to the part where the customer and I start to talk. Um, and also my cabin facing camera overheated again. So I will be switching to a full DJI Osmo action setup just because I've had no issues from this Action 5, which with the footage sped up a bit, you can kind of see how the 5 does move around quite a bit more than the GoPro has in the past. Um, I haven't done too much sped up content, but I'm kind of experimenting with that sweet spot of time when it comes to these videos. This one's just under 20 minutes, and there's really not a whole lot happening here other than FSD kicking ass in the rain. So any of you, the naysayers out there, anybody that you know that's like, oh, you know, FSD is a gimmick and only works in certain conditions, send them this, man. Show them. Be like, oh, yeah? Well, look at this weather. Look at FSD kicking some ass. I look forward to doing a lot more testing. Uh, and hopefully we get an update at some point for Hardware 3. I don't know that we will. I'm working hard to save up to get that Hardware 4 vehicle. Um, and, you know, spoiler alert, the rest of this drive goes well. There's no other concerns aside from technically that lane change without an indication that was a problem. But getting back to the little bit of a spicy conversation around Elon, um, check out what my customer has to say. And notice that I don't berate her with comments. I let her express her views. You know, the ride was almost over, so I wasn't going to push her. Had this come up sooner in the ride, I would have loved to have dug into her reasoning and challenged her, but we just didn't have the time. My audience really likes customer interaction, like when I have a back and forth with customers, but most people, you know, they're kind of just doing their own thing and I don't bother people unless it comes up organically. Yeah. So I do a lot of voiceover content that I just describe like what's happening. So can I tell you that I hate Elon Musk? Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. My wife's not a big fan of him either. Yeah. But I mean, I do recognize that he makes good products, I guess, but he's a, I don't, I'm not a fan of him. I think it's really important for people to be able to divorce those concepts. You know, to be able to have your opinion of a person uh, yeah. for whatever reason that they are, which everybody's entitled to. Yeah. But to yeah. be able to recognize where you know, like SpaceX's launches and the Tesla vehicles oh, are yeah. incredible. Yeah. Personally, I just think he's a complete dick, but yeah. Yeah, that's... But he does, he does definitely, I think he's a horrible, he doesn't care about his employees either. Let's see, since you're going to be putting this on the thing. I think he doesn't care about his employees. He will fire them if they don't really, you know, if they're not in that top 80%. But, he does make good products. He will, he will fire you for being complacent, you like, know, for not being willing to take risks and, and take chances. Um, I always recommend reading, like, the biographies, because they give you the good, bad, and the ugly on Elon. Yeah. Like, Walt, uh, Walter Isaacs, Isaacs meant Isaacson, jeez, sorry, his book was great, because it highlights everything from his upbringing, upbringing uh, when he goes into his dark demon mode and, and the, the good and bad and the ugly, which I think is just valuable to have because there's also a twisted narrative in the media that is a bit hyperbolic. But he's no saint, you know? It, I don't feel like yeah. any human is. In some cases, I think he's pretty good. I think just in some, like, um, from a personal level, I'm not a fan. Yeah, I couldn't fault you for that. There are plenty of people out there that share the same views I have more of a utilitarian mindset on it I don't really care so much about his uh, personal doings as long as the species is moving forward yeah <laughs> <laughs> no it's just one of those things 
why I, I got recruited to go work over there one time. And somebody asked why I would not, and I was like, oh, because I don't think I like his values. Mm -hmm. But he does have, like, it's one of those 50 50. From a female perspective, I don't like his values. Sure, sure. From a business perspective, I struggle. Oh no, you express all of your opinions. I do not mind. Again, my wife isn't a big fan either. I think it's totally okay to have differing opinions on people. Southwest is Terminal A, right? Yeah. Okay. So the yeah, signage is weird here, and I'm still kind of relearning the Orlando airport. Oh, did you just move back? Yeah, I just got back in August. I actually spent 11 years in California. I was born and raised here, but I left when I was about 19. Served in the military and all, and... There you go. Man, this thing Thank is getting us service. all the way up. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll take over just to speed up this part, but it got us all the way here. Holy shit. That's funny. <laughs> in the rain. That actually is pretty impressive. That's wild. I've got 2,000 hours about on the system and it blew me away. I, I was really expecting I had to help it at some point, but cool. Because it definitely doesn't have a 100% success rate yet. It's floating, I think, in the 70s and 80s right now. I need to look at my data charts. It's been a little while since I've well, taken my a son, My son and I invested in this, um, the vertical, what is it called? The vertical taxis. Oh. Yeah, the stocks were like three dollars not too long ago, so we invested in. You know, I, I bought him a thousand, and I bought me a thousand just to see what would happen with it. Yeah, very nice. Suckers up to like nine dollars, but it has the same philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. Self-driving, but it's vertical, so you just go up and out. But they say by 2040, we will be in vertical taxis instead. That would be a fun time. Yeah. Yeah, I like following all of these spaces. I'm just a big tech and space geek. See, now you can go and look up the vertical tech. Yep. Vertical oh, I absolutely will be. The for stock sure. today is at buying something. So, but it's new technology. They, they claim that the FAA is supposed to approve it in the next like, couple of months. That like is the first exciting. Of approvals. Yeah, and, and $9 is still a very cheap entry level price when you consider like where Tesla's gone, where a lot of yeah. these other stocks have gone. Yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> a little rainy, so I can't get you too much closer oh, than okay. this. All right. Thanks for picking me up. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. All right, got the forward camera back on. As you saw in the video, it did overheat. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the voiceover and maybe a little bit of the uh, customer commentary as well, because there was some conversation around uh, Tesla and Elon and stuff, and just more proof that I'm not here to proselytize to people. Everyone has their opinions, and that's totally okay. I don't agree with uh, a lot of people's views on Elon personally, um, but that's also why I recommended her to look into some of the books around him because there is a bit of a hyperbolic narrative around Elon. Um, when it comes to the politics and all that stuff, I mean, hey, everybody's going to have their opinion and I'm not going to judge you for it. That is all you. You know, you everyone has their their beliefs and, and you know, their worldviews and that's cool. You know, I'm not going to, you know, judge or punish anybody for that. Um, if you do like the political topics and diving into those conversations, then join me over on KM Discourse. Link is in the description of the videos. Um, my buddy and I started a podcast getting into all that. So we can take that to that channel and, and leave this channel to all the good FSD content, which, oh my God, can we talk about that for a second? Absolutely insane. Uh, I'm getting ready to navigate to this charger. I can't believe how well FSD just did. See, moments like that just get me so friggin' excited. And this is Hardware 3, version 12.5.4.2, guys. This is the version that on some days I just want to put my hand through my forehead, but then on rides like that, just demonstrate how incredible and capable the software already is, which just gets me even more pumped for version 13. And I really hope we're able to retrofit our Hardware 3 cars. I would pay that straight up. Anybody from Tesla watching this, I would drop two to $3,000 for a retrofit upgrade. I know a lot of us would if it meant getting Hardware 4. That's a revenue stream for you guys. Let us do it, man. Let us get that software, uh, hardware, sorry. But I mean, look at this. I, this software is performing like a total boss in pouring down rain. 
And like this wasn't soft rain. You saw how bad the visibility got and not a single red wheel takeover. Like, I'm, I'm wondering, I haven't gotten any messages from anybody at Tesla or anything that I'm on a special branch. It's all total speculation from just me, yours truly, but Elias and others can attest to even hardware four cars still getting the red wheel takeover under low sun conditions, or maybe not low sun conditions, but rain conditions. Uh, please hit us up in the comments on, on YouTube and on X for all of you and your cases and, and give your ideas, man, because you can see on my FSD tracker, guys, I have not logged a single system error disengagement, which is specifically red wheel forced takeovers since I got 12542. It was riddled on 12541. And whatever version I have that doesn't have that issue at all, I mean, even cleaning my glass wouldn't matter. With that much rain, that kind of eliminated that hypothesis that maybe me wiping down my windshield was the fix. No, not with that level of visibility issue. It even says full self-driving may be degraded. This message has been up here the whole time and yet not forced to take over and it handled it well. It wasn't like I'm not getting the message to take over and the system is freaking out. No, it handled it perfectly. It's handled all of the high beams at night, all of the low sun conditions, rising and setting and rain. Now it'll get to a point to where I can't activate it once I turn it off, uh, but that's also very rare. Uh, but we're pulling up to the supercharger here. Yeah, I'm blown away, guys. I'm I'm truly blown away. That was an incredible ride, total success, slam dunk, all the way up to the proper drop-off zone, too. That's a good day. Please share this video. A mad shout-out to Tesla and the Tesla team. I can't wait to test version 13 next year. Uh, when I get the new Model 3, I'm keeping Mew. Mew is staying in the family, so we'll be able to do hardware 3, hardware 4 comparison tests. Um, a little early here, but it makes sense just going into this, this charger. Yeah, not the best conditions outside right now, but hey, it is what it is. This is this is how I test the system, though, guys. I real world scenarios. It's not all freaking sunshines and rainbows. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know what you thought down below, and I will catch you in the next one.